Hi, everybody. I'm Marisa. If you don't know me, I'm the fiber artist, dyer, and owner here at Pretty Little Yarns. Um, I just wanted to say hi. I just want to check, is my, um, is the words on my screen backwards for you guys? No. No, Perfect. it's good. Okay. No, it's all backwards good. for me, and I wanted to make sure it wasn't backwards for you. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, so my in-house line of yarn is called Dye Pretty, which is what you see on the screen there. Um, I'm coming to you from Ontario, Canada. I'm just uh, in Woodbridge, which is if I guess the biggest landmark um, would be Toronto. We're about 45 minutes away from Toronto. Um, and this weekend and up until the end of Tuesday, which is Halloween, October 31st, there is going to be 15% off select items in the, in the shop. So it'll apply to all of my yarn and, um, some of the other hand dyed yarns as well as Cascade. Um, unfortunately not all of the hand dyed yarns, but most of them, um, and as well as their Cascade. So That'll be some fun shopping for you. The code is FLA2023, and it's going to come up a bunch of times in the slideshow because I always forget to write things down. So I make sure that I have it there for everybody else. So um, a little bit about what we're going to do today. I have a little sample showcase for you. I'm going to show you what's new with Dye Pretty, which is, again, my yarn. Um, I have some fun accessories that have been really popular this summer. Um, I have a mini skein set I want to showcase from a past advent calendar. If you were here on um, Friday night, you will know that we did an advent um, countdown calendar this year, but uh, we've closed orders for it so that we have enough time to dye it and ship it. Um, but if you missed out on that, but you want to participate in something, I do have two uh, six mini skein sets of yarn that I'm going to show you um, after. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about my felting line and we're going to get into a little felting demo. Um, and so I'm going to try and keep things moving so that I don't run out of time for all of this stuff. But um, if I'm going too fast, let me know. And if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. I'm going to be going bouncing around between different windows and I'm going to keep an eye out for what's in the chat. Um, if I don't answer it immediately, please just be patient. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. <clears throat> so if you've been here before to one of my presentations at Fiber Love Affair, you will have seen a similar slide to this before. Um, I don't want to forget all of the different dyers and makers that I carry. So there's all over here for your enjoyment. Um, Sweet Paprika is one of our favorites. Um, they make beautiful yarns. I'm not showcasing them today, but um, you can catch all of their stuff on our website, uh, same with Essence of Autumn um, and some of the other people here. I like to support Canadian dyers and Canadian small businesses with my small business. Um, if I guess there have been studies and when you shop from a small business, you're keeping more of the money that you're spending in your direct community. And by shopping from my small business, oftentimes you're then also supporting other small businesses. And I think that that's pretty cool. And that was one of the impetus, uh, impetuses for me building my business in the first place. So um, let's dive right in to our sample showcase. So here we go. I have some samples here um, to show you that have been popular this summer. So I'm going to start with the shawls. Um, I have a little pile beside me, so you're going to see me reach back and forth. So this is the one that you can see on the screen. I put it in the slideshow so that it's a little bit um, clearer, but it is a nice big size and it's worsted weight yarn. Um, all of the information is on the screen. So if there's something that grabs you and you want to write it down, it's easy for you to grab. This one is the Shadow Play Wrap by Alexandra Tavel, which is uh, two of wands. Um, you can get the pattern on Ravelry or on uh, two of wands website. And they have a free version on her website as well as a paid for version. And so 
with just four skeins of Cascade 220, which is included in the 15% off this weekend, you can make this squishy, lovely potato chip knitting shawl. Um, I love the little tassels that she included in the pattern. I think that they really finish it off. And it's just a really nice, snuggly, cozy shawl. Um, I call it potato chip knitting. This was like ideal for me watching all of my kids' sports and watching TV and snuggling down because it's just a garter stitch shawl with some striping. It makes it really easy if you're like me and you can't follow a pattern while you do something else. <laughs> it's a very simple pattern to follow and really great result. So now I know that our crocheters often get left out of our fiber festivals. So I have a crochet sort of equivalent. And this is, both of these patterns are good for beginners. Um, this is a the crochet pattern. It is the tea house wrap. And the same kind of vibe, it is um, Cascade, this one's Cascade 220 Superwash. Both of those yarns are interchangeable. So if you prefer to use Superwash, you can do the four balls of Superwash, or you could do this, this one's five balls. And if you prefer non-Superwash, you could do the Cascade 220 and use five skeins of that. Um, again, it's available on Ravelry, and it's also available on Two of Wands website. Um, but it is another potato chip knitting. The only thing I will say, so I had, I crocheted this, at least the first part of this three times because <laughs> I didn't read the pattern. <laughs> Anybody else do that? Is it just me? It can't just be me. Yeah. So right at the beginning of the pattern, it says you will be increasing four stitches per row. Right at the beginning. I was increasing two stitches per row. And so it looked like a stingray and I had convinced myself it would block out. <laughs> and of course it did not because it's not going to ever block out when you make it that kind of a mistake. So just be prepared to actually read the pattern and to count your stitches regularly. And, and otherwise it is, a, once you know what you're doing, it is a simple pattern and a, an easy to follow good beginner pattern. So next, up is this has been my number one sample this summer you've probably seen it at other fiber shows maybe 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 not it is the killer queen cowl by mary anarella it has been super popular this summer um try and bring it closer i don't know if it's going to show off the colors right but it calls for you to do up the back entirely, but we left it open a little bit. Sorry, my tags are in the way. Um, because that allows it to hang a little bit nicer, I find personally. Um, and it just goes over and it makes like a nice little cowl. You can turn it and have it asymmetrically. And it takes one skein of the accent color. This one is using clownfish on my coronet worsted base um, and two uh, skeins of the main color. This one is using, um, it's actually using Andante graphite from Sweet Paprika, but I'm sold out of that. So you can um, use it with my toothless colorway, which is very, very similar. It's a dark gray um, and it has a really nice effect together. Any variegated, if you have a variegated skein of worsted and you've been sat on it going, I don't know what I'm going to do with this skein without it looking like clown barf, because sometimes variegated yarns are like that. This is a great pattern because it breaks up the variegation. So this colorway in here, the clownfish is this is it on a bulky base. It's actually like a very bright, uh, let me see, like a bright orange and teal color. And most people, when they see it knit up as the shawl, are shocked to find out that that's what it is because it looks so subtle. So um, that is the Killer Queen Cowl. If, um, if that's something you're interested in, if any of these shawls uh, or towels or something you're interested in, 
and you are wondering what colors to put together, oh, absolutely reach out to me. Um, putting colors together is my favorite part. So uh, yeah, let me know and I can help you out with that. Um, somebody does not have their mic muted, I think. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> I was just, I'm very easily distracted and I was like, oh no, I can hear myself talk. <laughs> Um, so that is the Killer Queen cowl again. So that was um, one of our favorites this year. This is just a swatch from one of um, the patterns because the uh, person who's working on it hasn't finished it yet, but I wanted to show it because it's such a cool little pattern. It is called Ziggy Interrupted by Sandra Paul and it uses five colors, so five skeins. Oh, that's okay, Monica, don't worry, don't worry. Um, so it uses five skeins and it is like little granny squares. And so, um, you start with the little granny squares and then you pick up on the edge and make like a chevron and do stripes, Ooh, sorry, do stripes in your chevron. And then you add more granny squares and do, do then do stripes in your chevron and go on and so forth like that. And so that's a, um, that's a, a fun little pattern. And I'm going to keep this beside me and show it again in a minute because I want to show you the yarn that was used for that. But And lastly, in our samples, I have um, the sock head hat by Kelly McClure. And my boys this summer dyed some um, yarn with me on one of their PA days. And they wanted me to make them hats. And they had dyed sock yarn. And this is called the sock head hat and it uses any sock yarn you might have. I'm trying not to mess up my hair with the, <laughs> with the hat. So it looks better when you don't care about your hair. Um, but it's just like a simple hat. It's free. It goes from baby to adult. Um, and so it's a perfect, I just wanted to show it because it's a perfect um, gift knitting hat. I could bring it everywhere. It's super portable and I know a lot of people knit Christmas presents or Hanukkah presents or Diwali presents, all the different presents this time of year. So this is a great way to, again, showcase some single skeins of maybe variegated, maybe plain sock or otherwise fingering yarn. So uh, the hat is a sock head hat by Kelly McClure. So, uh, M-C-C-L-U-R-E. So those are our samples. <clears throat> Next up, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about our yarn here. So um, my in-house line of dyed yarn is called Dye Pretty Yarn and Fiber. Um, if you see on my website, there's some things called rare gems. Those are one of a kind. Anything else is repeatable. Um, I do have a listing of um, dyed to order. And I also have a listing of stuff that's ready to ship. I am in the middle of re-photographing my entire product line um, and revamping my website. So at the moment, it might not look perfect. Um, just some of the colorways haven't been photographed the way I'd like them to be. Um, but I wanted to make sure you had access to a picture of something just because uh, right now we're in the middle of this revamping process. So um, I apologize for that, but you're still going to be able to shop all of our yarn. So we have Tierra Sock, um, uh, which is our sock yarn. Tierra BFL, I don't have any right now, but it's going to be coming in the next few months. Diadem Sport is our sport base. Coronet Worsted is our worsted base. Scepter Bulky is our bulky base. And they are all super wash. Um, so they're easy care and super soft. I also have um, some braided fiber you'll find under um, circlet if you look for it there. I have three braids right now. So that is something you can check out. <sighs> and um, right now I wanted to also show you our sock set collection. So I did a, a little Halloween sock set. 
All of them are inspired by, if you've been following my Instagram, all of them have been inspired by gothic literary novels, um, which is a super nerdy Halloween theme. I realize that, <laughs> but I am kind of super nerdy, so forgive me. Um, so we have Dracula. Um, maybe this would be better to do on the other camera. Mm -hmm. We have Dracula, and Dracula is black and red, and the black has some resist dyeing done, uh, which of course I'm not gonna be able to find, but the intention was that the black looked, oh here, like it had like bites in it. So in, in practice, it'll be kind of like dashes of red and black with speckles of red in it. And then it comes with a sock, toe and heel mini skein. So altogether, this is 135 grams of yarn. So that's the Dracula set. Um, this one is the Frankenstein set and everyone's gonna say, but Frankenstein's green. But if you read the book, Frankenstein is yellow. And actually Frankenstein is the man, not the monster, but um, which I was an adult before I knew. And he's actually described as being yellow. So this is my interpretation of Frankenstein. Um, it's a kind of a acidy yellow with some orangey bits thrown through and some speckles of black with black heels and toes. And lastly, and I'm discovering in my world of being a nerdy knitter, this might be the nerdiest of the books because nobody has heard of it, but this is Rebecca, which is, I cannot recommend it enough. It is a 1938 novel, gothic romance novel written by Daphne du Maurier. And um, it has a Alfred Hitchcock movie made after it. And it also has um, a new movie on Netflix made after it that we watched. And it is very true to the book and very creepy and I like it. So <laughs> um, this one is called Rebecca and it's pink with some splatters of red with red heels and toes and black accents. So that is that. And those are included in our 15% off this weekend. So that is our uh, Halloween sock set. Next up is some of our new yarns. And again, they're probably going to show better on the screen than they will with me showing you, but I will show you them anyways. Woo another cauldron of yarn here. Pardon me, I'm dropping things. So first up we have our filigree base. This is a limited base that I had brought in um, to test out. I love it so much. I hope that I will be able to bring it back in again, um, but it is a Surrey alpaca and silk. It is super fluffy and fuzzy and soft. And I am not a lover of mohair. A lot of people are. I am not a lover of mohair because I find it scratchy. The Surrey alpaca is not. Um, let's see if I can find something that it, if you can see the beautiful halo. So it's not super scratchy. And in every one of these colors, we should have a fingering base that matches. So this one is pistachio. Um, we have janduya. I did a line of colors this summer inspired by uh, Italian gelato colors. So janduya is like a Nutella flavor. So that's janduya. Um, this one is yellow jasper, which is not one of our gelato colors, but we have that. It's not quite as, it is more this color that I'm holding up than what you see on the big screen. Um, we have fragola, which is a beautiful pink. It's kind of a cooler pink. It's darker than it's showing. I think the lighting that I've got is not great. It'll It'll show better on the other version, but you can see how fl fluffy and fuzzy it is. It's great to hold together with another yarn. Um, it's very warm and cozy and two, two or three skeins, three skeins max of that um, 
held together with two skeins of a fingering yarn and you would have like a ranunculus and or a love note or anything like that. Um, here we have, this is what the gelato colors were originally designed for. This is our jewels yarn. And I don't know how well you can see, but there are rainbow flecks of tweed in that. Maybe it shows better on the pink. Um, so the yarn itself comes with these rainbow fleck tweed in it. And then those tweedy bits don't, um, don't dye, don't take the dye the same way that the wool does. And so you end up with this. And that's what inspired it being a gelato collection was that it reminded me of sprinkles on top of your ice cream. So again, that's pistachio, fragola, and janduya. And this is the yarn that was used for these um, I don't have any of the blue and the yellow left. Those, uh, again, this this base was something I brought into test to see how people liked the speckly of the yarn. Um, they liked it enough that I only have six skeins left. So if that's something you're interested in, you can grab that. Um, and... Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Um, so you can see the colors here a little bit better uh, with the pink, um, the ones that are on, shown on the wood floor at, with the stripe beside it, those are the speckled ones. And then of course the ones that have the plant in the background are the um, Surrey silk and alpaca. So that is it for the new, uh, oh, actually I've got one more base that I wanted to show you. This is listed in my shop. We talked about it briefly. This is the Scepter um, Bulky. It is nice and thick, so great for quick knits. Again, perfect for gift giving season. Um, we have a limited color selection so far because uh, I'm just working on getting all of my colorways onto this base. Um, but it's a nice cozy, it's super soft. It's very, like very, very soft. Um, it's super wash merino and um, nylon. So would recommend that if you're looking for something that knits up quick. Somebody recently actually bought a sweater's worth of that yarn and made the most adorable crocheted sweater. It was white with a um, pink ladybug on the front and it was so cute and I was so excited to see it, but she says it's the coziest sweater. Um, and I don't think I have that yarn listed on the site yet as being dyed to order, but it, if it is something you want dyed to order, just shoot me an email and we can figure it out that way. Um, it's been a busy summer with shows. I don't know about everybody else, but it's been a busy summer and my, my website has been a little bit neglected, which is what's prompted me to kind of rebuild it. So um, next up are our accessories. You'll find these on the site for sure. Um, if you see the necklaces that are on the left side of the screen, those are super pretty, but they're also super functional. Um, in the notches of the wheel is a concealed blade, which sounds very dangerous. It's not dangerous at all. Um, I have one that I've had on my key ring for ooh, 15 years at least. And um, it's never broken or gotten damaged um, and it goes through security checkpoints and it has no issue. Um, the blade is exposed in little notches and you run your yarn through that, hold it taut and, and pop it through that notch and it just cuts your yarn for you. So if you've made a super stripey blanket or have lots of ends to weave in in a color work sweater or anything like that, you can swipe those through your uh, notches on the yarn cutter. That's what it will be listed as. Yeah, I love it. Um, that'll be, it's listed on the site as a yarn cutter. Um, and they are, I can't recommend them enough. They're lots of fun. And these ones are quite pretty. So there's those. Um, we have the little handmade tags. They say handmade with love. They're $4. They come in a pack of four and they fold over. I just made my new baby nephew a little sweater and I folded it over and put it at the hem, at the bottom hem. And it just made it look like professional somehow. I don't know. It gave it like an air of 
finished that made it so much nicer for gift giving than made it kind of elevated it from uh, homemade to handmade. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but you know, like it, it gives it that little polished finish. Um, and then I don't have very fancy pictures of these yet, but we have a collection. Um, if you were here on Friday, you will have heard that I collaborated with Rachel from Bear Valley Designs or Bear Valley Fibers for 3D printed um, elements for our advent. Well, over the summer, I also collaborated with her and she made 3D printed um, gauge, gauge square measuring tools, gauge rulers. Oh my gosh, my words today. <laughs> gauge rulers, the squares. Um, we have a two inch size and a four inch size. And we also have, uh, she designed for me, little wraps per inch tools that are super cute. Um, all of the gauge tools are on a keychain, so you can attach your other trinkets and tools to it. Our uh, wraps per inch tool has the option of it being on a keychain or not. Um, I like the keychain because if it's something that you're keeping by your wheel, if you're a wheel spinner, um, you can kind of hang it off of where your orifice hook sits and, uh, and it just kind of sits nicely there. So those are our, oh, oh, and if you look very closely, maybe if I turn me off this camera um, and just make it the PowerPoint. If you look very closely on the bottom, you see those little vials. You can see a better picture of those on our website. They're vials of stitch markers for people who lose stitch markers. So they're little glass vials. They have a, a tiara shaped progress keeper at the front. Um, and inside the glass vial, there are 30 stitch markers. So it's perfect if you do big lace projects. It's also perfect if you lose stitch markers all the time, like me. So <laughs> um, that is the accessories we have going on right now. Uh, next up, for people who missed Advents, I have these Advents from a few, actually I think they're from 2019. Um, you know, I am going to be super honest. We moved back in March and <clears throat> I have the color, the color that's shown, I have those ones. There is another color on my website. My inventory tells me I have one set. I don't know where it is. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not gonna show it to you because I don't know where it is. If it's something you want to order, please email me first so I can try to find it because I don't want you to order it and then not be able to get it. But this set here is um, inspired by the, I don't know if anyone's familiar with, um, there is a Christmas uh, classic movie um, from the Muppets called The Muppets Family Christmas. It was a made for TV special. It's available on YouTube to watch. It is super silly and lots of fun. And I highly recommend it if you like the Muppets, celebrate Christmas or either of the above because <laughs> it's super fun. It is a six skein set. And I'm just wondering why I have seven skeins in front of me. Oh, there we go. These are the same. Okay. So it is a six skein set. I will show it to you on here. And again, the picture um, on the website is probably gonna be a little bit more accurate, but they're each um, your standard um, sock yarn. So you can make a scrappy pair of socks. You can make any of those little advent um, projects, or if you were going to, you could uh, get the little mitten or um, and or sock patterns that Rachel will be releasing on December 1st and knit along with us as we make little sock and mitten pattern um, ornaments for the Christmas tree. Yes, I, I love that you know the movie and it's not just me. Um, actually, I didn't grow up watching that movie. I didn't know that movie, but um, when I, before I was a dyer, oh, hang on, this is the wrong one. Before I was a dyer, and I was just, um, had other dyers yarn in my shop. 
the person I had approached, I had approached two people about doing an advent. And I said, I want it to be themed after a movie. What movie would you like to do it after? And one person chose um, the Nutcracker and the Four Realms, the, the latest Nutcracker movie. And the other person said straight away, I want to do Muppet Family Christmas. And so I had to go and watch it. And it was amazing. It was so much fun. I'm a Muppet fanatic. So it was not surprising that I liked it. <laughs> Um, so next up, I'm just going to remind everybody about my felt pretty line. So with felt pretty, I, uh, needle felt stitch markers. I'm going to move myself. Ooh, not that I'm going to move myself over here so you can see them. Sorry if that was super disorienting. Um, so yeah, I needle felt tiny stitch markers and, um, I love them both as a knitter and crocheter and as a felter. I love making them. They're one of my passion projects. They're lots of fun, um, but I love using them because I don't know if anybody here is a crocheter, but sometimes crochet patterns specifically will have you clasp on like, a, especially if you're doing like a hat, it'll, it'll say clip on a, a um, stitch marker or a progress creeper at every round. And by the time you're done, if you're using like the enamel uh, metal ones, the one side of your hat is all like wonky because it's just so heavy. These don't do that. The heaviest thing on these is the clasp. And so it weighs virtually nothing because it's just a tiny little piece of fluff that gets felted to the nth degree. I try and felt it within a six degrees of its life so that it can be sturdy. Um, the more you felt something, the sturdier it is. And so that's what I do with my felted stitch markers. And I know people who have had them from when I first released them and are still using them and they've not failed on them. I've never had anyone complain. And so um, those are, we have a full selection. Most of them are made to order. Um, there are, there is a selection of ready to ship, but um, if you need it quickly, because it is uh, something you need like tomorrow, make sure to let me know so that I can let you know if it's something that needs to be made uh, or if it's something I have ready to go. Um, but yeah, the, you can get them on bangles. You can upgrade so that it comes on a little bangle and um, makes it a nice little gift or stocking stuffer. Um, or you can get them just on their own and they will come with the four little ring stitch markers that you see by those donuts there. So, and uh, if you look at the one that's hanging on the champagne glass, um, you can get those customized with your initials if you wanted to. So that's that. Um, last year, I had the sudden realization that if you felted stitch markers very big, then you would end up with a Christmas ornament. So, I ended up felting some Christmas ornaments. Um, and I did a couple of, I did one show last year with my felted Christmas ornaments. It was a juried show. Um, I was super proud of that because I felt like for the first time, I uh, if you don't know my background, I went to school for interior design. I've always been artistic and I've got a design background and I am very comfortable calling myself a designer. Calling myself an artist, is a very vulnerable kind of thing to do. I don't know why, but it it is. And um, being able to present or be at a show that was um, highlighting local artists and artisans felt really special to me. So that's something that I started last year. And so I did some wool painting, which is what you see on the balls. And that entails, you know, it's not 3D, it's 3D because I did it on a ball, but if I had done it on a flat, um, like an embroidery hoop or on a, um, like a flat piece of fabric, it would have accomplished the same exact look. It just would have probably been easier because it wasn't on a ball. <laughs> um, but it's called, generally people refer to that as wool painting. Um, you use very similar techniques to if you're painting a, a, a portrait or a, a painting of something. And um, you have to do the shading and all of this stuff. That's one technique that I worked on a lot last year. And then there's sculpting, which is more like what I normally do with my stitch markers. And my hands down bestseller of all of the things that I ended up bringing to that market was the Christmas pickle. 
So has anybody heard of the tradition of the Christmas pickle? Anybody? Okay. I see some nods and some shaking their head. So the Christmas... <laughs> Monica's, Monica's right on board with me this, this show. She's right in here. But um, so the Christmas pickle, she, Monica might not know the truth about the Christmas pickle. So um, it was said that the Christmas pickle was a like old German tradition where you hide a pickle on the Christmas tree and a glass, it's usually a glass pickle and you hide it on the Christmas tree and the first person to open it or to, sorry, the first person to find it gets to open the first present in the Christmas morning. Well, so that's only a little bit true because what actually happened is um, one location of Woolworths ordered German glass ornaments and for some reason was sent a lot of vegetables, including pickles. <laughs> and they didn't know how they were going to market and sell at Christmas time a whole heap of pickles to the unsuspecting Christmas population. <laughs> So what they decided to do was invent a German tradition that didn't actually exist and tell everybody, oh, you have to get the Christmas pickle because it's an ancient German tradition to hang this Christmas pickle on your tree. So it's actually just a marketing genius moment. <laughs> and, and that went for a long time with nobody really knowing that that was the kind of secret origins of the story. But um, we've had a Christmas pickle. Um, yes, I, I love that too. <laughs> when I first heard that that was the real origin of it, I was like, oh, that's fantastic. Um, we've had a Christmas pickle since we had our kids and they love it. They all run, you know, they run down the stairs on Christmas morning and try and look for it. Um, and, uh, I, we usually put it up Christmas Eve and I remember when I was a kid, this is just a random personal note, but when I, I grew up, um, I was raised Catholic and I grew up with my mom put the baby Jesus in the nativity on Christmas Eve night. So my child brain thought that Santa brought the presents and the baby Jesus at the same time. <laughs> so I think my kids also think that Santa brings the presents, the baby Jesus and the pickle. <laughs> and so, you know. Um, the traditions do pass forward and it's, it's kind of fun, but the thing is most Christmas pickles are, are glass because that's what they were originally supposed to be. Um, and when you have kids scrambling over pickles, um, glass might not be your best choice. So I made Christmas pickles from wool and, uh, the best part about all of the Christmas ornaments that I make is that they're from wool. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how, I'm, I'm going to see how far I can get because I have 20 minutes left, which is a great amount of time for you guys to throw all your questions in the chat, entertain each other or me with some, some stories about your Christmas pickle, um, and let us know uh, if there's anything you want to know. But I have a little, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a new one so that I can show you how I start, but you know, I have, I have one started here. Um, so here we go. Here goes nothing. Oh, thank you, Janet. So I would start with <clears throat> when you when you're felting, you have something called core wool, which looks often like this. It comes in any color that sheep's come in. So it basically is just undyed wool. And the idea is you use it for the core of your project because it's cheaper and it's kind of makes a base and you don't have to use all of your dyed wool, which, you know, for example, this is a collection of pickly colors. Um, you don't want to use all of that to build your entire pickle because that would be kind of a waste. So I'm going to just shift my chair a little bit. Um, now I have this handy dandy, but very loud, um, felting gun. It's a wee bit dangerous, but lots of fun and way faster than doing this entirely by hand. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of combination. So when you're felting, um, I am hoping to make a Christmas pickle felting kit for other people who would like to make pickles. 
Um, but that probably won't be ready until December. So if you want to give me a follow on Instagram, that's where I post mostly. Um, or you can join my newsletter, which you'll find somewhere on my website. I wish I had a better answer for you about that, but I will figure out how to make that more, more visible. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is pretty little yarns LTD. So I'm going to actually. Oh, no. Sorry, that sometimes bad things happen to good felting needles. Those ones are broken. I suspect my six year old has at least a little to do with that. But here, here we go. So um, I'm going to just pop that in here. Pretty little. LTD is my handle on Instagram. So when you're felting, you want to <clears throat> get your needle and um, get your fiber and kind of condense it or compress it as much as you can, because ultimately that's what you're doing when you're felting is you're compressing things. Um, all the air that is between the fibers ends up having to um it ends up being eliminated because you're essentially velcroing the wool to itself. So um, if you if you didn't know, because I didn't know when I first started felting, needles come in different gauges, different sizes, just like knitting needles or crochet hooks. And the um, thicker the needle, the better it is for the beginning, right? When you have bigger holes between the wool and itself, you can fit a bigger needle. But when you're starting to do something more fine, like add the details to something, or um, if you're like me and you want your knitting to, or your felting to be rock solid and bulletproof, then um, you will get to a point where a big gauge needle is not, is just simply not gonna fit. So, I'm trying to figure out where the angle is best for you guys. <clears throat> so I start by getting the basic form. And you very much have to try not to have the mind of a 12 year old boy when doing the pickles because it can get a little bit suspicious looking at certain stages of it. But I assure you, everything looks very PG once you get the green on it. <laughs> so that'll get you, it's still very squishy. Um, and you can go in here with this gun, which just does it, you know, a lot faster. And I can make it even faster if I wanted to be super crazy. That will get you how, how it starts. Now I've been doing that a little bit longer on this one and it's still not as firm as I would normally like it. Is this incredibly loud when I've got it going or is it okay? I don't wanna be hurting anybody. Is this okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. I know that um, Zoom, we were talking about this on Friday that Zoom has like built-in features to only capture voices now so hopefully that I can't even hear it I can't even hear it oh really it's I wonder if I do really loud <laughs> no perfect. zoom has really good that count uh, noise counseling feature now so That's yeah perfect. even when the airplane's flying above my house like people don't hear anything yeah it sounds like a little baby jackhammer <laughs> Because essentially when you push the button, this wheel turns, which makes the needle go in and out. In case you're wondering what's happening here. So, um, and someone is bound to ask, this um, machine came from Etsy. It's from a maker called Master V, um, who's based in Ukraine. Um, I bought it last year. It's never given me any trouble. 
It's 3D printed. It overheats sometimes, which you have to just give it a break. I just I feel it every so often and make sure it's not overheating. Um, you cannot find them made in North America that I've noticed. I suspect there are some safety laws that this doesn't pass <laughs> because it is rapidly firing little needles, but um, but I like it. It works really well for my needs. So I really mostly use it for this part for getting it to the stage that I want it. But yeah, usually I would felt this for longer so that it's not so squishy. But in the interest of time, I want to show you how I would add some color to this. So. Okay. Some pickle colors are going on. I have to go get some better light. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got some different sorts of pickle colors. I usually start with something darker. And this kind of gives you an idea of what it's like to do the wool painting as well. But you're going to, you would be wrapping that color. So remember I said you're using the core wool and then you're kind of enclosing it in the other color. So when you apply a layer of this, it ends up covering that brown up and making the green show instead. I guess you can kind of think of it like when you are, um, if you see like a potter working and they've got uh, their main clay and then they go over with a glaze or um, with some colored, I think they call it slip. It's like a wet clay mixture and those can be colored, but they don't tint the entire batch of clay usually. So it's the same kind of idea. You're adding color afterwards. Yeah, last year I had some Christmas pickles wearing Christmas hats, which was fun. And then I had others that were um, just, just the Christmas pickle. And I like to tell people that the one with the hat was great for kids, like little kids. Um, not like to tell people, it's the truth. The ones with the hat are great for little kids because they can see the red hat. But the ones with no hat is like hard mode because the green pickle in the green tree you can barely see. So it's good for like, if you wanted to keep the tradition going with some teenagers or anything like that, so. I'm going to focus on one side so I can show you all the steps without taking up as much time. But so first I would put my darkest color down. And I don't mind if the brown's peeking through because um, I always choose my core wall based on what I'm making. So I wouldn't use brown if I was going to make like a yellow star because that would show through brown and the yellow and that would be great. But in a pickle, a little bit of brown showing through is not the end of the world because it kind of just gives it some depth and some character. So 
it's starting to look pickly, I think. But it's not quite the right color. Again, this is super squishy. Um, after the show, I will felt this harder so that it becomes more firm and I'll probably give it a hat and all of that fun stuff. Um, next, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. Let me say this is kind of like one of those delicatessen pickles that have that yellowiness to them. So I'm going to add some of that. And I add that in kind of a creation, like almost like a vertical stripe along the length, similar to what you see in a, in a cucumber or a pickle. You can do a pickle more or less mostly with the machine, but I do like to get in there, especially to get, you know, I want this to look a little bit curved like a pickle rather than just a straight cylinder. I was doing my preparations for last year for the um, show. And for anybody who's in Ontario, I actually am participating in the same show. Again, it's called the Spice Holiday Market and it takes place in Barrie, Ontario. Um, and I'm also doing this year um, another show called Holiday Treasures at the Dufferin Museum, also in Ontario. Um, the Spice Market in Barrie is at um, the first weekend in December and the uh, Holiday Treasures at the Dufferin Museum goes from, I think it's November 28th to December 10th. Um, and they've got all kinds of artisans in there that they're showcasing. So, um, but I had prepared a bunch of pickles and I had sent my dad a photograph and uh, he thought that I had made pickles. He didn't realize that <laughs> they were made from wool. Um, so yeah, he's, they end up, they can look quite realistic in the end. Um, I'm also teaching, I, I did my first felting uh, teaching this summer at one of the fiber festivals I participated in. And I will be teaching again at a retreat in Ontario in April. Um, it's in Aurelia. It's called Fiber at Fern, and they're just working out the details of that. Um, and I will be teaching a felting class there. I think that I will be doing a um, felted succulent class. If you go on my Instagram and scroll back a bit, that's what I did at the show this summer, and um, it was quite successful and lots of fun, and people liked it. Um, and everybody came out with something they were happy with and proud of, so I think we'll be doing that again. But it's a great retreat I attended last year as an attendee, not as an exhibitor. And there's a market and it's an all-inclusive little, uh, like a resort, um, which sounds fancy. It's very casual. It's not super, super fancy. And everybody there was knitting or crocheting or doing some kind of fiber work. And it was so much fun to learn and to see all those different creative juices flowing for so many different people. And everybody had fun and the food was incredible. I have um, a couple of different like uh, food intolerances or allergies that normally can be annoying. It's not difficult to deal with. It's just annoying to deal with usually. They were really fantastic about it. So if anybody is making a trip out to Ontario in the middle of April, um, take a look out for Fiber at Fern. I will be teaching probably, um, they haven't finalized the class selections yet, but I will probably be teaching um, needle felted succulents uh, and uh, weaving on a mini loom. And um, I'm thinking I might do a class with um, two at a time socks on magic loop because it's the only way I know how to make socks, but I gather other people think it's very magical. Well, hello there, Miss Berna. How are you? I'm just adding a layer of this acidy green in here. Ah! 
Hi, there you go. So the more layers, the just the more kind of depth you can get with the different colors. If anybody has any questions or comments, we have still about four or five minutes left, but it would be a great time to ask them if you have any questions about any of the yarns I talked about or would like to see anything again, if you want me to pull it out real quick, now is your chance. Um, otherwise, you can catch me uh, anytime tomorrow, periodically the rest of today, because I am doing stuff with um, my kiddos after this, but um, I will still... I'm still available. I just, my response time will probably be slower. Tomorrow I will be more responsive. And uh, yeah, here is my pickle. I will also be adding, I don't know if it's going to sound weird, but like some pickles have, I call them warts. I don't know what they're called, um, but they have like little bumps and it's not going to show as much as if my pickle was felted harder, but they really improve the realism of the pickle. So I'm adding some of those. Um, but yes, if you had any questions that you didn't get a chance to ask today, if you wanted some help making up a kit for one of the shawls or for the um, cowl, um, anything like that, I am super happy to help with. I don't want them to be too close together or too similar in size. Oh, thank you, Mary Ann and Janet. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I really love presenting at Fiber Love Affair. Like, I would say that even if Eureka wasn't here. I It's just always so much fun. The audience is here because they really want to be here. They're always engaged and ask questions or respond. So I don't feel like I'm talking to the wall. It's, it's awesome. It's lots of fun. Yeah, I, I'm not traveling for any shows next year because Knit City is bringing Knit City to me. So that's fun. <laughs> and, um, but I will be doing, uh, I don't intend at this point to decrease the number of shows that I'm doing next year. So at this juncture, I will be doing basically a show every month. So if you have any plans to travel to Ontario, check my website. We have an events page and you can see where to find me in person. Um, and between now and then you can find me online. I'm always at Pretty Little Yarns LTD on Instagram. And I'm always at prettylittleyarns.ca. And before we sign out, I'm just going to remind you about our code. Let me just get myself back over there. There we go. So um, the code is Fiber Love Affair 2020, sorry, FLA 2023 for Fiber Love Affair. You get 15% off select items. Um, and you can find me at prettylittleyarns.ca. And I've been Marisa this whole time. And I have my finished pickle. I'm going to just try and show in better light. Oh, there we go. Maybe that shows. So you can see our pickle has different um, colors going through it, which kind of helps give the illusion of realism. So once I finish these, I'm probably going to post them on my Instagram. Um, I will not be listing my ornaments for sale until after the spice market, just because I don't have enough of them to do that because I'm doing two markets this year. Um, but some of the things will look like this. That says it's a little intense. Um, it says joy. I would say joy if this tag wasn't in my way. So I've got a set to say joy and love and peace and faith. I also have little 
heart key rings. Um, some of them are knitting themed. This one says pearl. So I've got lots of exciting things coming. I'm in the middle of felting an elf. That's what I was working on on Friday during our PJ party. So I start with drawing it in with a light color and then I fill in the color. So yeah, lots of exciting stuff happening here. And I'm really glad I got to share it all with you. And thank you so, so much for everybody being here and spending their weekend in their house cozy with us. And I'm excited to see what everyone else has to has to say. Thank you so much.